working on the fuel valve here. They give you a strip of silicone pad that you cut in half, and then they tell you to put a 5 8 hole in the center. I don't have a punch, 5 8 punch for that. I think the biggest I have is 3 8 So uh, what I did was just took me some scissors, just folded this in half, and I made a cut here, here, just about, oh, quarter inch deep. And then folded it the other way and made a cut and a cut. And what I ended up with is a kind of a rectangular, or yeah, rectangular hole. It's not quite 5 8 but what I found was I can stretch it over this like so. And then this will go over. What I did notice is this will not, at least on mine, this wouldn't fit over the valve. This hole wasn't quite large enough. So I just took my Dremel and opened it up and it's just the right diameter, kind of opened it up and kind of wiggled it through and it worked. And now this fits right over like so. And this silicone pad would go behind. This one would fit over. And this assembly here would mount to the fuselage. I'm gonna install the fittings into here right now. Just get some uh, dash six fittings. Went over and torqued this up, so this is good. Slip this back over. And which one did I grind? This one. Right. Okay, so this is ready to install. I guess I'll put the handle on. I'm gonna put some Loctite on this. It had Loctite on it before. And I need to make sure I do that again. Okay. The bottom is riveted with AAPQ42s. I had to get the placard to see what the orientation was. So if we're looking at it on the left side, uh, it's gonna go like this actually. Because that's on and then rotating it up is off. So that being the case, these are the bottom holes and that's what I can rivet uh, from this direction. The 42s. And then some 440 bolts and nuts go to the other two up here and, and tighten it down. A little tricky holding this all together here, but I think I got it. I've decided I don't want to use the 440 hardware they provide. I'd rather use my metric stuff for this, just because it's easier to drive and get a, a hex driver in there. And I've, I've got the little nut drivers here for metric, so I'm just gonna do that. A small hardware like this, I, if it makes sense, I prefer just to use metric. Now what I ended up doing was running the tabs, the cage tabs, between the uh, brackets for the fuel valve. And it still allowed me to cinch it up real good. I don't know, that worked for me. I like it. It's fuel pump time. Checking out the diagram here, it looks pretty straightforward. Got some nut plates I'll do in there. Uh, these holes here are not located for the holes at the back. Uh, so I will have to, once I get this in place, I'll match drill, put the nut plates in there. 
Manual is calling for 3 16 socket head screws to go in the underside of the lugs here. I just think it's going to be easier instead of trying to fish an Allen wrench in there. An AN321 can slip through both of these and it's fine. It's not like we're not torquing these down enough to where we're going to bend these lugs here. So catching the top one and the bottom one I think is completely fine. And honestly, I kind of wonder why I kind of wonder why they didn't just place this on here and just screw up from the bottom with some quarter inch because those are tapped. So yeah, I mean, if you had to remove the fuel pump, you would have to, let's get this lined up. You'd have to take the whole plate off, but the plate mounts to the fuselage on tabs with nut plates anyway. So it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal to take it off. Hmm. Maybe you'll do that. Eh, I'll do nut plates and just do the longer bolts. I suppose it could be either way, honestly. Let's drill these now. That'll go there. And you need a nut plate here for the fuel filter and this strap. Go grab one of those. So this goes like this. To modify this into what they call the short configuration where the pre-filter attaches directly to the boost pump rather than with a coupler or a hose uh, and to do that I got to take this fitting off there's an o-ring here that I'll get my I'll get a pick and carefully pull that o-ring out Because that O-ring now goes on this male AN6 fitting. Like that. And then this threads back in here. And now the pre-filter will thread on here. This is an AN fitting uh, with a flare on it, so no sealant required here. And then the 
strap will go over. And an AN3 bolt will go in that hole there. Let me go grab one. That is a AN3-3. The Dell clamps are always frustrating. So close. Now, I wouldn't expect to see an air gap around here. Uh, this would appear to me that it doesn't quite fit. This clamp is too big. And it kind of, I mean, it's like it's not even there. There's no rigidity being provided here. So I think what I'll do is undo this clamp and I'll put some wraps of um, some tape or something around this filter. All right, I got that settled. I just put a few wraps of uh, my BMW fabric tape. That's what I call it. Um, and that, it took up about a 330 seconds gap around there, but that worked. It's, uh, it's pretty stout now, so. So this is now ready to install in the airframe. I can now get the hose to go from the header tank to the fuel filter. I'll have to install the fitting in the header tank still. I'll do that now and then get the hose on there. to open up this hole here. This is going to be the pass through uh, the, through the firewall for the gas escalator and for the feed line, fuel line here, coming up from the pump through the valve. And it's got this uh, hole piloted here. Just need to open that up. So I'll use a step drill, bring this up to size. This will mount here. I'll have to match drill the four hole pattern here through the firewall as well. Then I can get this piece mounted, which will then let me secure this fuel line here. Uh, one thing I don't really, don't really like um, is the fit of the fuel line. This is rather long. Yeah, I measured it about an inch and a quarter longer than it should be. I mean, certainly I can push it forward, but the hose kinks right here. I don't like that. So I think I'm gonna get a custom hose made at 11 and 5 eighths. This one is 13. Um, that will, that'll get me about the right length that I need. Um, also, it's hard to see, but I think on the manual, it shows the 45 degree down here in the straight up here. That just really didn't work well. Um, and same thing here. 
I think that the, from what I could tell, the manual says the 45 goes here and the straight is here. And for whatever reason, I just find a better fit this way. And yes, I did flip this around thinking, well, maybe I'll try it the other way. And it still just feels much too long. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna have a custom hose made here. I'm gonna leave the 45 up here. This one's okay. If I put the 45 here and kind of orient it up like so, it pretty much works. I mean, it could be a quarter inch shorter. It'd be nice, but, um, cause it's gonna be probably about like that, but that's okay. Stainless is some nasty stuff. I've said it before, I don't enjoy it. I'm go a little bit bigger. Need to do is match drill this. I need to see. Okay, yeah, definitely it's going to be this way. Okay, so I'll match drill one, I'll clico it, and then I'll come opposite corner, clico it, and then I'll do these. I just have this temporarily mounted with two bolts right now. Uh, but what I did find is uh, the 45 degree on the front, like the manual shows, did actually end up working out better for me. I was mistaken thinking that I was going to have a better fit back here. But once I got this on, I do find that it fits better. I still wish it were shorter. There's just a little bit. It could be, it could be a half inch shorter, actually. Let me take this off and I'll just have a look. I, I know you don't want it too short. Like, I get that but also sometimes too long is a bit of an issue. Um, if it were, gosh, yeah, oops. If it were, it's not much. If it were three eighths of an inch shorter, it'd probably be a pretty good fit. And honestly, I don't even know that a 45 here, I feel like a straight here and it'd come back, the hose could just kind of take a little bit of a turn in and go right up to this one. I think that'd be better than having it come up here and do that funky thing, but it's honestly, it's fine. It'll, it'll be okay. I suppose, hmm, I could make a hard line from here to here. This, this doesn't going to move. That's not really going to move. Well, I opted to make a hard line here. We'll see. I might change my mind. I wanted to try this out. I used some stainless, 3 8 inch stainless line that I had here from other projects. And I just, uh, just bent it up, came straight back, came down and over, and then lined up with the uh, valve there. And it all lines up real nice. I don't see any reason why that can't be a rigid line. Um, there's gonna be no movement between these two. Uh, and honestly, you know, really, <laughs> This could be a hard line from here to here as well, if I wanted to try to tackle that. Uh, but at, at least I'll try this for now. Again, I may change my mind as I progress through the build, but something I wanted to try. It just wasn't, I don't know, I just really wasn't liking the way that flexible line that came with the kit worked. So there we go. I'm toying around with this. I don't know. I fabricated an aluminum line, a hard line from the valve to the pump. Um, I don't know, I just kind of, I would prefer hard lines for this stuff where it makes sense. So I may change my mind there. I don't know, I may just go back to the hose, but I had some of this, uh, what is it, 50? I forget what series this line is. It's the soft stuff for fuel lines. Had some and just figured I'd give it a shot. 